brings me to the next movie, Blood Creek, which jumps us forward 19 years after Flatliner, so much more significantly much more significant jump than from Lost Boys to Flatliners. We jump forward the uh, 2009 to a much smaller budget, to a much different period in Schumacher's career when he uh, wasn't at the top of the directing heap. Like he had certainly uh, still made movies here and there that made some mark. And uh, not I'm not even talking about just quality. I'm just talking about making a big step in the Hollywood system, you know, as far as star meter is concerned, which is a different thing than quality. His, the last thing that he ever directed, though, were episodes of House of Cards, which are terrific. Like, this is a guy proving his talent by jumping into another production, you know, like his work in House of Cards was stellar, and uh, it was great to see his name on the production list for a show like that, you know, in the later stages of his career too, just to acknowledge that he was a terrific director and a talented director. The weird thing about Blood Creek is it's this small movie with big talent. <laughs> like that cast list is again crazy, and 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 in in this sense, these these are people that were about to break out. Michael Fassbender was about to break out. Henry Cavill was about to. Right. You have uh, Dominique Purcell, Mr. Prison Break, and that show obviously had already been out. He's not maybe on the same star playing field, but probably the biggest star at that point that was in this in this movie. But you're just talking this interesting kind of level of star play and definitely a talented cast right definitely a smaller movie the reason uh, uh, going back to i was mentioning running just because michael fassbender when he runs in this movie it is so intense in a different way than Kiefer running in flatliners i i, I think it's an interesting thing you know like there's something that can be so immediate uh when a character is running with the intensity that those characters are running. Yes. Definitely. You know, like <laughs> when the keeper is running the flatliners, it's this uh, being several steps ahead of everybody else in terms of his own headspace and everybody else not really knowing where he's at. Uh, when Fassbender is running, he's this incredible threat yeah. <laughs> that is otherworldly in so many ways. Uh, when he like jumps on and off of a horse, it can be really terrifying. Right. What I think one of the things there's so much to talk about really with Blood Creek. One of the things that I find interesting about it is Lost Boys wasn't a small movie, really exactly, but it was a smaller movie that was made really quickly. And Blood Creek is obviously a movie made small and quick. Right. But but the difference is obviously Schumacher has this interest in sometimes going the sexy route. I mean, again, this is a fashion designer guy. This is a guy who is in Madonna's Vogue video as a photographer, you know, before he was a film director, you know, and he's clearly got that side of him too that enjoys the stylish side of things. But when you go to, Blood Creek or look at other movies that he made like 8mm really edgy gritty dark thriller Right. 8mm is one of those movies that was probably a reason that he ended up making something like Blood Creek because <laughs> the Hollywood system is like you're kind of messed up in the head bro and of course Nicolas Cage is Nicolas Cage so he basically came out of that unscathed a little bit right but Schumacher, in terms of what he wanted to bring to the table, like Schumacher wanted to make that kind of movie. He wanted to make stuff that was darker and grittier and didn't necessarily have the sleek, stylish side of things that we talked about in Lost Boys and Flatliners. Not that he disliked making that other stuff, right? But right. I feel like there is the side of him 
that and this happens sometimes with a number of people that are in the Hollywood system for long enough and in big enough a way like somebody that maybe made a Batman film or two and uh, maybe heard a thing or two from studio executives and they kind of maybe get burned out from studio notes and studio things and they kind of sometimes find themselves wanting to just get down and dirty and kind of go into that part of themselves Right. Uh, make a different kind of movie and make stuff outside of the system. And that's part of what Blood Creek is. And the other side of it is this case of how successful is it as a movie, regardless of intention or regardless of what's interesting or compelling behind it. And I've seen so many mixed opinions and thoughts about what Blood Creek is or isn't. And I know we talked very briefly before we recorded about what you thought of it a little bit, having seen it for the first time. I had seen it before um, years ago, closer to when it came out, um, but when it was out on video, because it didn't have a big theatrical release. It was very limited in scope, small, very under the radar movie that, you know, was shot in Romania that just ha so happens to have these big people behind it. It's kind of weird how that happens sometimes. Set in West Virginia, but filmed entirely on location in Romania. Right. That's an interesting thing. Uh, yeah. But, like, it's, it's one of those movies that ultimately I feel like it, it's not quite what it should be. You know, like it it could be an even better movie. It has so many really cool ideas and components, but it's not completely what it could be. Uh, the writer, uh, David Kajganich, <laughs> like I really don't know how to say his name, Kajganich, he, he wrote one of my favorite movies in recent years, Suspiria, a remake of Suspiria that came out just a couple years ago. I absolutely love and adore that movie. I think it's wonderful in so many ways. I feel like a Suspiria double feature, both Suspirias would be theoretically a fun thing to do at some point. Maybe on another horror episode sometime in the future. But something interesting about Blood Creek, um, which at one point was known as Town Creek, is that the writer was not happy with Joe Schumacher because Schumacher rewrote and redid a lot of stuff in this movie, which also is reminiscent of Lost Boys in some ways just because of Schumacher coming in with his own ideas. In this case, I have no idea what he changed. I don't know what it originally looked like. I'm sure it wasn't originally children. Um, I'm sure it's not the same type of change that Lost Boys had. Like, oh, it's all kids. There was this occultist Nazi child who came to West Virginia uh, no, I'm sure it's not the ex that that version of the story, but whatever the changes were, I'm not sure what they were. But I I I do think that the Blood Creek that we have is this really interesting thing that Schumacher uh, still brings a lot to. Like there's so much in it that's still fascinating. I feel like the thing that's probably the worst about it and i'm not usually the type of person that's bothered by this in the same way as others not generally speaking but some of the cgi looks cheap and i feel like they could have gone with more of just the makeup effects because i really like a lot of the makeup effects bassbender looks utterly terrifying in this movie and part of that is his physical presence and the intensity behind his eyes. But it's also the makeup. And this idea of this Nazi occultist who's gathering power from this rune stone. It's, you know, yes, otherworldly thing happening that's also potentially incredibly dangerous with the... Uh, Nazi ideas behind it, right? Because he, the story behind it being this guy that 
came to West Virginia in 1936, so before World War II had broken out. But as the Third Reich gained steam, they're looking to gain power from these rune stones. And meanwhile, these farmers decide to essentially capture this guy and hold him there, but they're also caught in time. And there's this loop of, you know, 70 years, basically, where they've been stuck in the time uh, waging battle with the Nazi occultist. <laughs> That's a really wild story tangent. I feel like some of that, and this is part of the criticism I have for is some of that is a little bit breezed past. You don't get a full chance to experience that in the story of this family. Right. A big measure of it is just kind of the full speed ahead nature of the immediate action. And it doesn't always give you a chance to appreciate the dramatic journey of these characters you don't really get a full chance to even know the relationship between Henry Cavill and Dominique Purcell. Um, that would help even more to yeah. spend some time, not necessarily even with them, just with Cavill before his brother shows up and takes him onto this dark journey <laughs> where he's unaware of exactly what he's stepping into. Until, oh yeah, by the way, this is really crazy circumstance I'm, I just pulled you into. Right. With so many supernatural, scary components to it. Like, it's it's almost not enough to, to know why they got pulled onto this journey. That full speed ahead nature is probably the only thing that ultimately brings the movie down some. And at the same time, uh, personally, I really enjoy this movie uh, a great deal in spite of its issues like seeing the really scary nature of like killing the horses and bringing them back into undead state to rush into the house and attack people <laughs> uh, that's a really intense scary notion um just how quickly he kind of commandeers things uh nazi zombies you know that's a that's a thing. I, I do I do think that the performances all around help sell a lot of the movie. Which again, like Schumacher tends to get good cast and those good casts tend to give good performances. I can't really point to anybody that doesn't fit, that doesn't help bring something to the table. They're just these really fun, dark grace notes in this movie. It gets really gritty and gory in parts. Yes. It has that intensity that Schumacher is capable of uh, amped up pretty far. Like I said, this is the almost waging war with the Hollywood system Schumacher. <laughs> the the guy who is entirely in his own headspace. We're just going to go all out, Schumacher, uh, and and not concerned with making a super pretty movie. He's he's okay with roping a guy's neck with barbed wire movie, you know, like right. This, this is a different speed of thing. And uh, before I turn over, I was just going to mention as well, uh, Cal L at the end and the potential of uh, an, a weird series to to come from this or at least a weird sequel where Henry Cavill again Cowell brands himself and is ready to take down some Nazis <laughs> right that's one crazy promise at the end that's obviously uh unfulfilled at least as of yet I don't <laughs> I don't think there's any chance of a sequel or anything happening but Who's to say that somebody wouldn't redo this thing at some point in a, in a different spirit and really flesh out some of these ideas, so to speak? But it's hard to say you'd get somebody as good as Michael Fassbender yeah. as a single threat. What do you have to say, Drew, about this late entry horror film from Schumacher? You know, I uh, I think that there's a lot of similarities to the story, at least with the brothers, to 
a show that we both like, Supernatural. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Supernatural would have been pretty. You know, it it been out for a couple of years at that point, but uh, you know where where Dean Winchester goes and, and brings Sam along with him on this hunt, it just ends up being a <laughs> fifteen season long adventure from there uh, versus this this film <laughs> uh, with these brothers but it, it's kind of a similar vibe what it what it doesn't have like you said is that kind of extra depth to where we kind of know the history of these brothers you can tell if something's there you, I like their chemistry together but I wish there was a little bit more to it to kind of kind of sell it a little bit more and to kind of tie them in to this plot. The Lost Boys begins and ends with the music. This one begins and ends with Fassbender. I mean, he's incredible in this. And like you said, the the, the makeup effects and just on him in particular, it's just such a, you know, terrifying and cool look and like I almost wish that this was a pilot to a TV show. It feels like kind of. Yeah, it it does kind of have that vibe. Like the way we see them going out and, and taking down these Nazis all over the place. You know, probably would never get one as as uh, well played as, as Fastbender, but it would it would be a cool concept. But I I, I love the uh, the ideas at play here this is kind of you know uh almost not quite but almost lovecraftian type of story where we're playing with some real you know potential extra worldly supernatural kind of horrors and a nazi uh, being in play with that particularly scary the animals uh also being kind of zombified is terrifying i i really i really like the cast in this too i think they sell it i do think the movie does come off as cheap i mean it is it, you know and it and it's the you know mostly the cg that kind of does it and i i'm like you i don't I'm not a detractor of CG usage, but when it looks, when it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good. And uh, in this case, I, I think, you know, maybe it was a budget issue. Maybe it was a time issue, but I, I think a little more practical take on it would have, would have helped this one a, a, quite a bit. I think what it lacks for in that department and, also in kind of the writing is the just or you know in that emotional depth of the writing that's kind of lacking what it does have is just the immediate driven nature that you mentioned and it is very intense and they're very full on boom 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 here we go it's a ride and it doesn't let up until it's over and I enjoy that about it, and I think it, it. You know, in some ways, it's a weakness for the, some of those other points, but it's very confident in its story, and it's very confident in the the way that it pushes it forward. And I, I think that kind of balances it out. I, I uh, really do like it. I, I was kind of surprised, like not that I thought I was just going to hate it, but I, I thought I might kind of. You know, be be a little underwhelmed or 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 see, you know, kind of a mediocre movie. But I I don't think that's what this is. I think there are, you know some touches to it that in other hands definitely would be. But I I think this is a unique horror film. I I like you know this gritty side of Schumacher because I you know I haven't seen eight millimeter. I would like to see that at some point at the films i have seen of his not not too many of them go this route and i kind of like seeing him tour with this so i uh, i 
potentially like to see some of these dark, darker Schumacher films because I definitely kind of, you know, think of him in a more whimsical light with Lost Boys and things like that. Not that he's not capable of serious films because I have seen Falling Down as one of my one of my favorite movies of all time and you know one of his best but I I enjoy kind of this side of him and you know again Fassbender like you said was about to explode onto the scene particularly the same year he was in Inglorious Bastards and for me was the best part about that movie because I'm not very fond of it and I know and I have similar feelings on that. Uh, but he was incredible in that movie, and he, that's how he got on my radar. And, of course, he was just everywhere after that, was in movies all over the place. And Cavill would eventually become Superman, and now is also uh, Geralt of Rivia, very talented actor. And uh, Dominic Purcell is... You know, uh, I never watched Prison Break, but I did see him on uh, The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and CW shows. He's terrific on those shows. Uh, I do, yeah. I like him a lot. Uh, and uh, kind of in a smaller role in this movie is an actor that I really enjoy, and that's uh, Shea Wiggum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I particularly love him from. Boardwalk Empire. He plays Eli Thompson uh, in that show. Uh, he's he's pretty he's pretty good in this too. Even for, for you know what little he's in it. I I like, uh, but ultimately, like Fassbender is what I like the most in this. And he just just that look that of his character. It's so menacing so terrifying and it's just like pitch perfect and, you know when he's like <laughs> hammering into his into his own skull make up the uh, the gore coming out I, it touched a nerve it, it was a little slightly unsettling and I, I I really enjoyed that about it as an edge I didn't expect a Schumacher film to have. Having said that, I, I think that, you know, this one kind of lacks from a presentation standpoint, even though there's some stuff in it visually that's really cool. And I think, you know, Schumacher's pretty confident in that regard. You know, without the Hollywood system, it doesn't have certain things that maybe could have pushed it over the edge to... Um, so, and, and again, I think there's a little bit of emotional depth to this that, and, and some logistic things uh, about, you know, how and why he even has the powers to get these things done in the first place. But that, you know, it's so fast paced that none of that matters. And I think it kind of balances out. But I, I, I'm going to give it a solid B. I think this is a, a, you know, an interesting, you know, somewhat scary, <laughs> you know, it's, it's in a fun way. It's, it's more of a, a cult horror action type thing. I, I think people that enjoy stuff like the Wolfenstein video games or Nazi zombies, because with, you know, before, before, uh, this was right before, like, the evil Nazi boom of uh, entertainment. Uh, the, the Wolfenstein stuff was in the 90s, but they, you know, brought the games back in the, you know, recently in this last generation of console, way after this movie came out. And the Nazi zombies on Call of Duty, it was the late, you know, probably 2010 somewhere in there, and they started doing that, and then, of course, uh, there was a uh, another film that came out the same year, and I actually saw that, but somehow didn't see this, 
it was it was a Norwegian film called Dead Snow. Yeah, uh, different plot, but it's kind of it's a lot of fun. Uh, I like both of these movies probably about the same. They were, I think Blood Creek and Dead Snow would be a fun double feature for someone if they're listening to this. Uh, if you haven't seen either one and you like that kind of idea of a cultist uh, Nazi zombies, uh, just the, the concept of it, I, I would watch both of these movies back to back and have a fun night. Uh but yeah, I think this one's solid. I I, I kind of like this side of Schumacher, but I would have liked it to see have a little bit more going. No, honestly, I I kind of slid in this one. Like usually, most movies exist on a, a teeter totter, as I put it, between two grades. Often, for me, like where I'm trying to decide where a movie's going to settle, and this one's been between a B plus and a B. And I think I had to fall down on the lower end on a B, the same as you. Like, I keep wanting to give the movie credit even more for the parts that I really love in it. There are just some details in it that are just super cool, you know. Some just fun, viscerally exciting bits to it. Uh, like I said, the grittier Schumacher side of things is cool, but it doesn't have a complete vision uh to to completely bring it home basically there's and and who knows who knows what that original screenplay looked like as far as like why the screenwriter was upset with schumacher maybe there was something more to it maybe it deserved to be changed up i don't know and maybe that's the problem maybe that's part of the problem is there was a script the schumacher felt the need to change but it didn't change enough because like he felt the need to change Lost Boys, but he also had a great screenwriter to help him change it. Right. And uh, in this case, Schumacher himself is changing it, and maybe they just didn't have enough time to fully develop all these ideas to bring everything home. Because what's under there is really interesting, and <laughs> I, I want to bring it up again. It almost feels like it could be a pilot. And the only reason it doesn't feel like it should be a pilot is because Fassbender is so awesome, you don't know where it would go without him. Right. But nonetheless, a solid B is not the worst place to, to be either. 